The Italian theater yes. influenced Stanislavski, correct? Well, Eleanor Duce. Eleanor Duce and Tommaso Salvini. Right. And your mother was part of the Italian theater. Yes, but and in New York. And then she came to New York, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And she became a Hollywood film actress. Yeah. Um, then, yes, yeah, she was brought out here by Warner Brothers. And Tell us what films people can relate to in the history. In her history? Yeah, in our film oh, history. Oh, well, she... Um, she worked with Edward G. Robinson? Oh, she worked with... Ed oh, my God, she worked with everybody. Robert Taylor and Ernie Borgnine and oh, Zora Lampert and... Um, oh, my goodness, Do you goodness, know Zora so Lampert many was people. at Lincoln Center when I became a spear carrier over there? Yeah, well, she and, and yeah. Ernie Borgnine did this film called... I forgot the name of it now right now, but I'm in it, too. Right. It's, yeah, the, the film. Now, how <laughs> having God. a mother, mm. Italian mother, mm. raised in the theater, yeah. becoming a film actress, yes. how did that in any way uh, affect you? Did she, what I mean by that is, did she tell you anything about acting? No. She never did? No. <laughs> so you just got what you got from observation? Yes. Because I know in your book, Friendly Enemies, yes. which is the Bible for all directors, Thank you, and I, should be the yeah. Bible for all actors, it's just right. they don't they, know about they it. They get a lot in out of it. In Friendly Enemies, right. you talk about the fact that you went on, you had to create a moment with your father, and you went to these oh, tears. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And you automatically went to effective memory. Yes. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. I, what was I, nine years old or something? And they needed the, a little girl and the play they were doing. And, um, and uh, she was supposed to cry. And I just automatically thought about my father if he died. And that and brought he hadn't the died. tears. No. Right. No. So that whole thing about the method, drug up all this stuff about your dog dying. Oh, That's yeah. just hocus pocus, isn't no, it? No, it's not hocus pocus. You just imagined it. The whole point of it is that I had never heard of that kind of work. Right. Uh, naturally, at nine years old, where am I going to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I your just father did hadn't it in, died. Yeah, I so made believe that my father, believe. father died. Yeah. You went as if. Yeah, I did an as if, thank you. That's an important term. Uh, and, and that was it, and my mother was stunned. And... Um, it was, she was surprised. I, mean, I don't blame her. I mean, I never took acting lessons, but then neither did she. And then you, you became a working actor. Well, when I grew up a little, right. yeah. And you worked. Yes. And then, jump cut to 1970, Oops. somehow you began to develop a workshop for directors, which was revolutionary in this country, That's right. teaching directors yeah. how to do what? Learn the Stanislavski system, how to get to the inner life of the character? Well, it, 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 it's even more fundamental than that. First of all, and why did I think of this? Because I'd worked with so many directors in film and in the theater, say, move there, move there, and so on. And they would never say anything. And so, you know, I'd bring to them what uh, I studied by that time, at least. I knew what I was doing. But they didn't. They didn't, you know. It was a rare director that was really understood the actor um, as an instrument of his story. Yet there was a Kazan. Yeah, well, like a Kazan, exactly. And, and he had been an actor first. Let's not forget that. And there was yeah. a Jeff Corey. Who, yes, exactly. Who really knew. Yeah, but he didn't direct film. Now, they got that all from the theater lab or the group uh, theater or... Well, Kazan studied, you know, was a, a member of the, um, of the group theater. Jeff Corey was in this young uh, person's unit that where they would get some training at the group theater. Then they came out here, a lot of people from the group theater when that dissolved in New York, and they formed the Actors Lab, which is the link, and that lasted uh, nine years, and it was destroyed by the... Um, Tenney Committee and the House on American Activities Committee, you know, during that awful red witch hunt right. in the 50s, and uh, that destroyed. Yeah, so Ball and Arthur, and Arthur Miller and yeah, well, so they many were in New York. Were, well, yeah. it, no, Arthur Miller was not at the actor's studio. No, but I mean, so many people were injured by that. Oh, by that blacklisting. Some of them 
committed suicide. Some of them died of heart attacks. Some of them had no way of ever making a living. Some of them left the country. It was horrendous. And yet these were some of the that? greatest minds of the American theater. You got it. And thank God that you have put this all down so people can share in a legitimate document. When I first read the book, and I'm not here to sell the book. With this one? Yeah, Friendly Enemies. Well, I thought know, to myself, wait a minute, I've read every acting book around. I read every acting book. And I thought, well, here's another acting book. And I read the book and I went, this is not another acting book. This is a manual for actors to understand the Stanislavski system, the craft. But it's right? really for the directors. Yes, I understand that. That's my primary concern. But the concern. actors coming to Hollywood from all over the world, yeah, and right. I've met hundreds of them, as you know, in my life. Oh, yes. People refer. The first question I had, which you helped me with, was what do these people need? They need a craft. Okay, now <laughs> my question right. to you is what is the craft? What is it? What is the actor's craft? The actor's craft. I mean, is there are 12 year olds out there that need to know what the actor's craft is. Well, I don't know about 12 because they well, can have 14. to use their imagination like I did. Right, you know, but still they, they nine want to years old. craft. They go on auditions. It, oh, I know. I know. So they what's have the craft? Stage. Well, the craft is having a, a process by which you can um, <clears throat> enlighten and enliven the character that you're playing. Okay, so if I go to an improv class for three years, do I have a craft? No. Okay. What you do have, though, is the ability to think on your feet, to go with the moment, uh, to have to listen and respond to mm -hmm. your uh, partners. But in terms, but that is, but that's in the moment, and you'll never have to do that scene again because it's all an improvisation, right? Mm -hmm. Now, but when you're dealing with the text, whether it's in the theater or it's in, uh, on film, you're dealing with a character with a history and you're dealing with other characters who have their histories, and sometimes you have to do very, very emotional scenes. Other times you have to laugh, you know, so, and you don't feel like laughing, you know what I mean? So you have to find um, ways of making all of those obligations real, real, so that people can empathize with you. If you're faking it, it leaves the audience cold. Yeah, there seems to be a, uh, a wave going on uh, mm. about people uh, encouraging people to memorize the words, tape the audition, oh. and just memorize and just do it, the do it system. Awful. Now, what, the, Awful. What, what I did is I started to take the list of actions from your book uh -oh. and give yeah. them to people and say, try this and try this and try this and try this. And I noticed that their voice changed. Mm. And I noticed that their demeanor changed. Uh -huh. And I, I recorded on tape for them because they're solid in their mind, many, many, many people. And there are many, many classes, memorize, go out and yeah, memorize right, and come in. Right, yeah. And they don't know that that's, they think that's the end of it all. They think that is the technique. Oh. And I realized that when you go to school, you memorize the words and get the A, because I did that. No, oh, you I did. memorized the words and got the A in psychology. Oh. And humanities. Uh, uh, and I don't remember what the words were <laughs> because I also <laughs> forgot them. Because they had no value for you, you see. That's and what you don't is remember. Does that happen to an actor? Oh, you bet. He just memorizes the words? Well, yeah, I don't believe in uh, memorizing the words, just memorizing the words. Some people can do that very well. If you don't know what the words are, are coming out of, you're not going to remember them very well. And that's why, <clears throat> I mean, I don't. I don't sweat it. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't. I, <coughs> I don't sweat the um, uh, memorizing of the lines. Cheers, sir. Uh, if you're m just memorizing, <coughs> it's coming out of an emptiness. It has no. What you say has no value. It doesn't mean anything to you, and sir, it certainly doesn't mean anything to your partner because you're, there's no subtext. <coughs> You know, they're not communicating anything. And Lee used to say, well, you can't think of two things at the same time. You can't think of the dialogue. Oh, well, you, oh no, but you shouldn't have to think of the dialogue. You should know, you know, I mean, you should know your lines. But it's much easier to memorize something and, and be spontaneous if you know why you're saying it. 
Which brings in the why, which is very much in your document. Yeah, that's right. What am I doing and, and why am I doing it? And how do I feel about you on top of it all? There was a long period of time where I would go to the movies or <laughs> listen to actors and couldn't hear their voice. Uh, right. And a lot of uh, actors told me in Hollywood, where I've lived, as you know, since 68, um, that I'm supposed to just talk low. Or they're talking so low, you can't hear them. And that was kind of like a style of acting for a while. Well, it's considered real. But probably but you can't hear that, what they're saying. Well, <laughs> well, there's something more with that sound man, too, you know. You could say something about that. But I think that really came out of the fact that too many actors were overacting and articulating and very stagey. Well, that kind of acting doesn't work on stage either. Not as far as I'm concerned. So there's a lot of actors who go under mm. and over. Well, that's, well the, the ones that go over... Are not there are not that many left, but now they're all going under. But I think that going under is a reaction to actors going exaggerating what they would call and still call stage actors. Right. But however, for me, stage actors, if there's in the theater, if there's nothing behind the line, I don't know what they said. I I simply don't understand, and I have to work too hard to put the words together and get some sense out of it, by that time they're on to another page, so to speak. You know, if there's nothing behind the line, it has no value for the audience. I don't care if it's on the screen or it's in the theater, except that in the theater it's more obvious and it's more pathetic. There's a lot of uh, misinformation or just plain ignorance about, about the method. Oh, tremendous. And oh. I realize that it has some tie-in with some political re reaction in the country with the un-American activities. But whatever, there seems to be a lot of resistance. I ran into a producer last week, and he yeah. said, uh, I told him, I said, you know, I lived at Lee Strasberg for many years, and I was in a master class for many years at the Actors Studio. And I said, I learned a lot from Lee because I was a very troubled young person. And Lee taught me a lot of things. And one of the things he taught me to do was to understand that there is an art, there is a craft, and there is a way to concentrate and focus. And this producer said to me, he says, you know, I hope you're not into that method stuff. And I said, what is the method stuff? I said, you're talking about Jack Nicholson or you're talking about what is the method stuff? He said, well, you know, you go in your life and you dredge up all that stuff. And I said, I don't remember Lee ever encouraging people to do that. And I'm certainly not defending Lee Strasberg. I don't work for Lee Strasberg. But I'm only interested in how do we define the method? I mean, I named my dog after it. This is the method. There's the method over there. <laughs> but I mean, how do we define the method for these young people? They're 18, 20 years old. They want a, they want a method. They want something. Well, I avoid that word right. because of the stigma attached right. to it. So, so uh, the, said the to you, term I always use is process. Process. It's a means to an end. Right. You know, you have to do the scales in order to be able to play the concerto. Well, it's the same thing. <clears throat> you have to practice tennis against the wall in order to um, finally play the game and play it second nature. You don't have to think about it. You know, there's always a lot of work behind the brilliance of any um, profession, whether it's tennis or it's uh, singing or it's uh, uh, playing a musical instrument or being a great actor. It's a lot of hard work. And it, 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 it doesn't make any difference what title you use. If it works, use it. But most of the time, it doesn't Last work. year, I don't mean to cut you off there. That's right. If it works, use it. Mm. The New Yorker magazine did an article of 17 pages on sense memory. And oh, hit, really? I yeah, I lost the article. I'm trying to oh. retrieve it. And it went all the way back to Thomas Edison uh, inventing the light bulb. And it went to sprinters. And I read the article, and I was really impressed because, you know, I, I became exposed oh, to that technique for a very long time. Yeah. And, and you talked about having a rock-bottom technique. You know, is that part of that rock bottom technique? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that they discussed in the article uh, is how athletes and sprinters and different people 
that if they are sensory, they have sensory awareness and sensory training, they can tap a zone. A zone. Yeah, where they can make decisions real fast uh, 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 as a sprint doctor. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, going back to, you know, Louis Strasberg, I thought that's basically, you know, now that I'm older and, and I was no about 30 better. at the time, and now I, I go back and I think about what he said, and I thought, you know, that basically that's what he was talking about, is getting into that, that zone. which they <clears> call <throat> relaxation <throat> or mental relaxation, or they had all different terms for it. And I think, in a way, trusting your impulses. <clears throat> because, I, I mean, I'm not a sports person, but if somebody is, you know, aware that somebody's going to come and tackle them, and there's an awareness, not necessarily that God has to hit you, and he moves away, that's an impulse. But that comes out of trusting what you feel, which is, oops, something is crowding in on me. You How know? does a young actor study to do that? Well, <clears throat> they, I mean, don't they don't get it from their life in the middle class. No, but what the, there are exercises in an acting class um, that encourage that spontaneity. What exercises would you say they are? Well, um, I, there are so many that I'm, I'm having. <laughs> are there sensory exercises? Well, there are sensory exercises, but that I think sensory exercises are, they, you know, they, they, it serves many functions. One is it does help you relax. Yeah, cause because you can't it do takes it if you don't relax. No, no, wait, no. You, <clears throat> yes, you can. You can relax your body. I mean, that, yeah, but that I mean, if you're mean, thinking, I'm not hot. That, I'm not hot. I'm not hot. No, you, you, <laughs> yes, a lot of people will do that, but then they're third-eyeing themselves. Right. And if they would just allow themselves to just focus on something outside of themselves. But I love that they term relax. that you wrote down in that book, third-eyeing themselves. Yeah. Because an awful lot of people do that. Well, sure. And that is the killer on an audition. It's a killer. <clears throat> when you're playing a role, period. It's not just about the audition. I mean, what if you get the audition, uh, get the part, and then you're third-eyeing yourself when you run um, on camera or on, in the theater? I mean, it, 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 it cuts off all your impulses because you're out here watching yourself. You're not in the moment. You know, you're just not. Well, in a movie, they can stop. Yeah, but they don't want to. It costs too much money. No. You know, it's too expensive. And maybe that's why so many actors that are not following their instinct or impulses are. But that's camera. right, they're they just not. Keep going. That's right, they, they just keep, keep going. going. They're just empty words. I, you know, it it really is pathetic. I mean, I can't watch um, a television series, for example. The acting is so uh, formulaic. You know, it's just everybody. They all look alike. They all sound alike. And it isn't just in the casting, but it's the style. Everybody is kind of a monotone. You know? We're talking real fast. Yeah. Talking real fast. It's it's scary, you know. There's nothing original about that. Well, it's it's going to pass. Nothing compelling about that. It'll pass. Yeah, and I wonder what's going to be, what's going to take over. <laughs> I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it? No, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't know. One of I the worry. Things, w one of the things that uh, I find is that the, uh, actors come to L.A. and their their main focus is I have to go on an audition, and I think what happens there is that your material for directors relates so much to what an actor needs to know, which is basically how to break that script down. That's right. And by memorizing the script, I sometimes I'll give them the script and say. Oh, I know you like memorizing the script, so why don't you go out, sometimes I'll do a private lesson, why don't you go out and memorize the script for a while, I'll come back, and, uh, and we'll see. And then they do then it, happened? you know, and these are people that are not, you know, off the bus. They've trained, they may yeah. even have a sad card. And, and oh, I'll well, say, that's, yeah. not, that's not hard to get. No. And, and, and then I'll, I'll tape them, and I'll go, oh, by the way, did you notice that in the scene there, that she came in the room, that you were talking to an empty room? <laughs> oh, no. I said, did you forget to read the script? What did you read? 
I read the dialogue. I memorized the dialogue. God. Well, you left out half of the script. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. Well, how do we encourage them to read properly? Because when you come out of school and you got an A for reading, they suddenly think these young actors, when they get to Hollywood, mm -hmm. I know how to read. And, you know, the, they say, come in for a reading. You know, it's like <clears throat> you're a thermometer. Come in, we're going to read it. And they're going to read you. But actors never read, do they? Don't they talk? Well, they're supposed to talk, then they're supposed to read. But isn't it's reading different than talking? I mean, if you read out loud, see Dick run, run Dick run, they read punctuation. Yeah, I mean, th there's never thought about uh, what's behind those words, never. You know. Well, that just has to do with your scenic objective that you talk about that directors need to. Well, the directors don't know what it's, don't do it either. Okay, so we but have all these actors coming from all over the world to Hollywood to yeah. become. Uh, television and film actors and commercials and, and and how should they prepare for these directors because I know that's th can you tell me some of the directors that you influenced so greatly in your life if you don't mind I know we don't want to name drop but really we need to well um, the ones that are really hot now in particular and have won awards um, uh, well, at the top one right now is Alexander Payne brilliant sideways he is brilliant, brilliant. Everybody so, uh, was you know, did you, Sandra have you Oh seen has a career now. Who? Sandra Oh. Oh, I know, but they're not married anymore. No, I know, but yeah. I mean, she. Yeah, that's was right. It didn't, in that film. it didn't hurt being the wife of the director and no. getting that part. She must have learned a lot. No, but she was very good. She was yeah, excellent. She's very good. She gave it everything she had. And Virginia now, Madsen? Uh, well, uh, Virginia, uh, that's right, it made a star out of her. Yeah. I know and her she mother did good very work. well. Yeah, and she did very good she work. She did good work. So what do these young actors coming to Hollywood, what do they need to do to prepare for these directors? They need to study with the right teachers. And who are the right teachers? How do we find the right oh teachers? Oh, my God. Anybody that says, um, talks about... I mean, they don't know how to pick an actor Anybody teacher. who... Uh, well, of course they don't. But anybody who gives you line readings, anyone who talks, who doesn't help you get behind or understand what, who that character is and what it is they want, and how they feel about the other people and, and the other characters. Anyone who doesn't help you with that, is it run away, just run, run, run. Anybody who talks to you about line readings, run away. What about directed scenes in an acting class? Does that help an actor? Well, it depends on the director. The acting coach. What, who has you mean no the teacher? Of acting. No the, history of acting or directing. It's directing the actors. Well, uh, does that they help have, an actor get in touch? Well, of course not. Well, they think it does. Well, because you know everybody wants it uh, wants to be rich. Everybody wants to be famous, and they don't think they have to pay their dues. And what is the dues they have to pay? They have to study with the right people. Because they think paying their dues is going on a lot of auditions every week. Oh, of course. And, and they do go on those auditions. And I have fr you know, friends that are three auditions in one day, for example, and particularly because of commercials. And they're constantly running around town, driving uh, from one freeway to another because they have an audition. And you know, they're not looking. If it's a commercial, it's one thing. But if it's... Um, a movie or a um, you know a television show, they've got to bring something to that, and they can't bring something to the audition if they haven't been taught to create something. Yeah, and I think one of the things that are great in your book is is uh, explaining to the directors about how to pick a casting director. You know, uh, yeah. I could talk to you forever and ever and ever, and I know you don't have the time because you have to go to work. <laughs> But you know what? <laughs> yes, I do. We've, we haven't even covered half of it. No, we haven't. It no, really we're going to have to do it again, don't you think? Oh, any time you want. Well. You know, I feel like a, you know, a pioneer and a, um, oh, but there's a word for the people who are fixated on making things better. <laughs> well, this is going to help uh, actors, and this is going to help... Uh, Oh, I hope uh, so. Casting people, this is going to help agents and managers to really understand coming from you uh, 
I have highest respect for you and your background at the Actors Studio, and uh, that uh, someone like you has to be able to speak up and let people know where it's at. Because everybody's involved in show business. Can't sell sneakers without it. I know, but you know, when you get these pretty people who win beauty contests, everybody goes after them and wants to turn them into a star. And why should they think that they need to do any more than that? Well, they have not been conditioned to think along those lines. Because many times that doesn't work and they're gonna see this interview. I hope so. Because they won't last. They, they will don't not last. last. And so, you know, pretty people are a dime a dozen. Sorry for about that, guys. <laughs> well, the agents are telling me now they can't make much money from them. Because I said to an agent one time, why would anybody pay her? She doesn't have a craft. We still have a craft. The director has a craft, the cinematographer. Well, there's there is still to. a craft in yeah. Hollywood, isn't there? Well, there is certainly in the technical side. Right. But when it comes to directors and actors, not really. I mean, the directors know a lot about the technical end, but they don't know, they uh, have no appreciation of the very thing that is going to humanize that script. The public's not going to buy it if it's not truthful. No. Times are changing. I hope so. It 20 bucks to go to the movies. I mean, how, how can you relate to the, all those special effects? You can't. Oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's kind of nice. <laughs> it's nice to do this. <laughs> it's nice to get the word out. I feel like a missionary. Well, that's it. Yeah, in a way we are. Uh -huh. That's right.